بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وتقا وهدى وعملا يا أرحم الراحمين فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الهدي وإن خير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So last time we finished talking about the story of Ibrahim عليه السلام الحمد لله And we talked about also Ismail عليه السلام and until his death and what, what occurred during his time with his, with his father Ibrahim from Bina al-Bayt until the story of the slaughter, you know, building the house and the story of the slaughter of Ismail, uh, the sacrifice, okay? So now today we are going to start a new chapter, a new chapter of the, story, of the series of the stories of the Prophet. So the first chapter of the stories of the prophets, we talked about the chapter before the flood, which, which we talked about Adam and Shaith and the nations bet- before Idris, the nations before uh, Nuh alayhi salam. And then we concluded the chapter of the flood in the series of the stories of the prophets with Nuh alayhi salam. After Nuh alayhi salam, there was the chapter of the nations between Nuh and Ibrahim, which is the chapters of the nations that were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then last time we concluded the chapter of the life story of Ibrahim. Today we start a new chapter, which is this chapter of the history of the Israelites. Tariq Bani Israel. Before we actually start with the first two prophets of the Israelites, they are also known in the uh, Bible as the patriarchs of the Israelites, right? Ishaq and Yaqub are two patriarchs of of three patriarchs. The first would be Ibrahim. So in, in English, they're known as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Before we start that, who are the Israelites? We, also, we need to define the term Israelites. Israelites are any individuals or in group of people, a group of nations who are descendant of Israel, Ibn, Ishaq, Ibn, Ibrahim. Anyone who is descendant of Isaac, uh, Jacob, who is also called Israel, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. So in our modern time, we keep hearing about, you know, I am a descendant of an Israelite uh, because I'm Jewish. Jewish or Judaism is a religion. It's not an ethnicity. Uh, Being an Israelite, this is an ethnicity, which is part of the big family of Ibrahim. So the Israelites are related to Ibrahim. And Ibrahim's children also, there is Ismail. Which from Ismail comes the Adnani Arabs, right? The Adnanite Arabs. So the Israelites and the Arabs would be cousins, right? They would be related to each other. So is every Muslim a descendant of Ismail? Not every Muslim is a descendant of Ismail. But also, the same thing, not every Jewish is a descendant of Israel. And not every Christian is a descendant of Israel as well. Because uh, Isa, alayhi salam, known also as Jesus in English, right? He is a descendant of Yehuda, who is one of the uh, the, uh, children of Israel. And a descendant of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
So there was a period of time where Judaism was spread. There, uh, there were Yemeni Jews. And when I say Yemeni Jews, uh, the Yemeni tribes who were descended from uh, yeah, yeah, Qahtan, or in English known as Yaqtan, Qahtan bin uh, Hud, right? So before Ibrahim. So there were Yemeni tribes who converted to Judaism. That's like, be, I think, before Isa. And there was also a period of time during the Prophet and before the Prophet. After the Prophet, وسلم, there were nations such as uh, Germanic nations, right? Germanic people, Slavs, Khazars. Khazars are a Turkic nation. They also converted to Judaism. So not every Jewish is an Israelite. Not every Jewish is a descendant of Ishaq yeah, uh, or Yaqub. This is a very confusing and misleading thing that unfortunately we live under and that we, many people is confused and mistaken, right? That when they see a Jewish, this means, oh, he's a descendant of, of Jacob, right? And, you know, my people and the history of my people. No, not every Jewish is, is a descendant of Israel. So let's start, inshallah, to talk about the history of the Israelites, which is going to make this even more clear. The reason why I started with this, because first we need to understand who are the Israelites in order to correlate with who are the Israelites today and who is not the Israelites. But inshallah, now we're going to dive into it in depth within the stories of the prophets. Because the history of the Israelites is tied with the prophets. So first we have the first prophet of the Israelites, or the second patriarch, which is Ishaq, Ishaq alayhi salam, Isaac, right? So Ishaq, in Hebrew, he's known as Yitzhak. Yitzhak. Yitzhak, there is a letter in, in the middle of the, of the word, which is known in Hebrew as Tsadi, which is the Sad of Hebrew. So they, didn't, they don't have the Lod, right? The Lod is the only letter that in, in Arabic. It's an exclusive letter of Arabic. So they don't have the Lod. So instead they use the Sad. So Yitzhak or Yishak or Yadhak. This is the meaning of the name of Ishaq. It means Yadhak, the one who he laughs. He was born in Canaan, and we have talked about the story of his birth uh, when we were talking about the story of Lut, how the angels came to Ibrahim alayhi salam, and they preached to him and told him the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him a child from Sarah 14 or 13 years after Ismail alayhi salam and he's going to be called Ishaq min wara'i Ishaq Ya'qub. So Ishaq grew up, grew up in Heb Hebron, Hebron, the city of Al-Khalil today with Ibrahim and with Sarah alayhi salam and then after he grew up after a while some say when he reached 40 or before he reached 40 his father Ibrahim alayhi salam have sent to his nephew. Remember we talked about Ibrahim having two brothers, right? Haran and Nahur. Nahur was the one who, who stayed alive and Haran died way back before Ibrahim started like preaching, right? So Nahur married Malka. Malka is the sister of Sarah. Sarah is the wife of Ibrahim, right? So Nahur had a child. His name is Betawil. So Ibrahim sent to Betawil telling him, I want your daughter for my son. I want her to get married to my son. So Betawil had a daughter. Her name is Rifqa. Or in English, the very famous female name, Rebecca. So he asked, Ibrahim asked Betawil for Rebecca for Isaac. And Rebecca came over to Canaan and she married Isaac. And they stayed in Canaan and they got two children, twins. So Rebecca got pregnant with two tw twins. Before that, Rebecca was not able to conceive a child. So Ismail, uh, sorry, Ishaq alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for her to get pregnant. So she got pregnant with twins. When she gave birth to these two twins, the first one to get out to the world 
was called al ice or ISO in English. al ice or ISO. And al ice or ISO, he was really white and he had reddish hair. And he was giant, like he was strong, you know, with a lot of muscles. And then when he came out, the other child, the twin brother, was holding the heel of al ice. So they called him Ya'qub. Ya'qub is from the root wo word Aqb, which means heel, Aqb. So they called him Ya'qub because he was holding his brother's heel. So both of them were born and they were raised and grew up. Ishaq loved al ice because al ice was the, the eldest. Both of them are twins, but you know when you have a twin, and then you say that twin is five minutes older than the other twin, right? So Ishaq loved al ice because he was like a couple of minutes older than Ishaq. You know, many parents love their eldest because, you know, they, they think that he is going to carry on the, uh, he's the, what do you call, the, the crown prince, right? He's the higher. He's going to carry on my legacy. So he loved ice. Rebecca loved Yaqub because he's the youngest, right? So there's more sympathy to him. You know, he's, uh, he, he has, he's like the, the king, the little king of, of the house, right? So Ishaq alayhi salam grew up. And as he grew up, his vision started getting weak until he was near to become blind. So one day, Ishaq alayhi salam wanted to eat a spe specific type of food. So he called upon ice. And he told him, I'm, you know, feeling like I want to eat this specific type of food. Can you please go and hunt for me and get me that specific type of, cook for me the specific type of food? If you cook for me the specific type of food, I will pray for you a very good pray from Allah, for, uh, pray for you. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will ask that huge blessings will be descended upon you. So al Ais, he was a very good hunter and he was a very strong warrior. He went to the, uh, to the wildlife and he started hunting. So Rebecca saw this and because she loved Yaqub more and she wanted this blessing to go to Yaqub, so she told Yaqub, go and get your animals and grab the two best goats you have, the best among all of these animals and slaughter them. And then she gave, she gave him the clothes of al ice and she told him to wear it. And then when he slaughtered the two goats, she got the skins of two, those two goats. The skin contains hair, of course. So she wrapped the skins around his arms and neck because al ice was hairy and Yaqub was not. So she pushed Yaqub as being al ice to Ishaq. So... He did what, he, what his mother asked. He slaughtered the two goats and he cooked it and then he came over to Ishaq. And then once he approached Ishaq, Ishaq told him, who are you? Because he can't see, right? His vision is weak, so he, he can't recognize physically by seeing the person. So he just felt like someone is approaching, so he's like, who's there? Who are you? So Yaqub alayhi salam says, I'm your child, ana waladuk. He did not lie. Right? He did not say, I'm Ais. No, he said, Ana waladuk. He, he could be Ais, he could be Yaqub. So Ishaq said, uh, Your voice sounds like Yaqub. And then he started touching his body and hugged him. And he said, However, your body sounds like it is Al Ais because it's hairy and you're wearing the clothes of Al Ais. So, like, the smell is a smell of Al Ais. All right? So after that, Yaqub gave the food to Ishaq and Ishaq ate from the food. food. After he finished eating from the food, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Yaqub the most valued among his brothers and for his descendants to be given a lot of wealth and a lot of land and a lot of uh, strength and for, for the descendants of him also to, to be a lot, to increase his children and descendants. So Yaqub left after that, satisfied, right? And Rebekah was satisfied. 
who comes? Ice. He comes back. Okay? So he approaches his father, and then he tells, he tells his father, here, here we are. This is the food you asked for, right? So Ishaq is like confused now. He's like, who's this? So Elias is like, I'm Elias. And he's like, what's this, my child? So Elias tells him, this is the food you asked me for, right? So uh, Ishaq said, didn't you just get me that food and I ate from it and I finished eating and then I prayed for you? So Elias said, no, I, no, I have not brought you the food. La wallah, ma ahdart. So Elias figured out that Yaqub did this, all right? And he got so angry. Because now uh, Yaqub took the blessing and he took this from him. So he got so angry that he carried on grudge against Yaqub. And he went to Yaqub and told him, I promise you, once my father dies, once our father dies, Ishaq, I'm going to kill you. Because of like the grudge he held. So then after that, he went to uh, his father, Ishaq, and he asked him, at least, you know, like, at least pray for me. Like I tried my best, right? At least pray for me. So Ishaq prayed for him that his children would take the harshest of the land and also for them to like have wealth and to be increased. So Rebecca, when she heard that al Ais has promised Jacob that he is going to kill him, she told Jacob, leave the land and go to my brother who lives in Harran. Her brother's name is Laban, right? Laban ibn Bitawil ibn Nahur. Ibn, Ibn Nahur Ibn Tarih, Azar, right? So she told him, go to Harran and live there and work for your uncle and marry his daughters, okay? And stay there until your brother calms down and then come back so, so you're not hurt. And then she went and told Ishaq of what happened and Ishaq ordered him the same. Go to your uncle, live there and then come back. Once, once your brother calms down, come back. So you're safe and everything's fine. So Jacob had nothing to do, right? If he stays, he's gonna be killed by his brother, right? So Jacob decided, okay, I'm gonna carry on my trip into Harran, the town of Harran, the city or the region of Harran. So he went to Harran, and while on his way, night approached him, so he slept. So he grabbed a rock, and then he put it under his head and he used it as a pillow and he slept on it. While he was sleeping, he witnessed a dream. In this dream, he saw a bridge, mi'raj, something like a bridge between heaven, heavens and earth. And there were angels. Those angels were descending and ascending from this bridge. And he heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to him and telling him that I'm gonna bless you and I'm gonna support you, all right? And I will take you back to your family safe. And don't be afraid. And you're a blessed one. So Yaqub woke up from this dream and he's so happy, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him in this dream and he was so happy. So he said he promised, he made another. Another is a promise that you do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the case of us. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something all right, and he promised him that I'm gonna do this thing. Even if this something did not occur, scholars say that you still have to do the promise because you promised Allah. So he promised that on the site where Yaqub has slept, where the rock is, he is going to build a masjid for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he asked Allah that I'm gonna do this, but please bring me back to my family safe. And he grabbed this rock and he painted on it. He marked it so he, when he comes back to fulfill this promise, he knows the spot exactly where it is. So he left the Kanaan completely and he reached Harran. There, his uncle approached him and greeted him and hugged him. And then he took him with him to, to his house. So his uncle had two daughters. The first daughter, her name is Leah. And she's the older daughter. She's the eldest, but she was not that beautiful. And she had some problems with the way her eyes looked like, right? And she had, uh, her vision was very weak. So she, she was not that perfect lady for him, right? And the younger one was called Rahil. And Rahil was really beautiful. She was so beautiful. So Yaqub asked his uncle, I want to marry Rahil. So his uncle says, I will give you Rahil, 
but I want you to work for me seven years as a shepherd and take care of my animals and my farm and barn. So Yaqub said, okay. So he started working for seven years and the seven years were done. And once the seven years were done, Laban, his uncle, uh, gathered the people, made food and made a big wedding for his nephew. So the next morning, Yaqub would wake up and then he looks and he's like, okay, what, what is that? What's going on? His uncle did not give him Rahil, but gave him Leah. But Yaqub wanted Rahil. And his uncle promised for him that he's going to give him Rahil, not Leah. So Yaqub went to his uncle. He's, he's angry with him. And he said, hey, you tricked me. You tricked me. You betrayed me. You stabbed me. I asked you for Rahil. I did not ask you for Leah. Why did you do that? So his uncle explains to him, in our norms in Haran, it is not acceptable for the younger girl to be married before the older girl, the eldest girl. So you have to get the eldest and then you have to get the youngest. And back then, before the Torah, before Musa salam, it was okay for the man to marry two sisters. That was fine. But then when the Torah came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, this is haram, you can't do that. So anyways, Yaqub alayhi salam said, I want to marry the younger, younger one. I want the younger one. This is who I want. So Laban says, okay, I'm going to give you the younger one, but you have to serve me seven more years. Okay. So Yaqub is like, okay, I'll serve you seven more years. All right. I, he just wants Rahil, right? <laughs> so he serves him seven more years. And then after the seven more years are over, he gives him Rahil. This time it's for real. It's Rahil. It's not a, a, another woman. <laughs> so he gets married to Rahil. And then he lives with his uncle. And he keeps on working for his uncle. The total years of 20 years. So his uncle gives his two daughters two slaves, two servants. He gave for Leah, he gave her Zulfa. And for um, Rahil, he gave her Bulha. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to, you know, make it up for, uh, what was her name? Leah. He wanted to make it up for Leah because Leah was not beautiful. She had a lot of problems with the way she looked and all that. So he wanted to make up to her. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he gave her like six to seven children. So she got pregnant and she gave birth to Rubil, Shamon. Lawi and Yehuda. In English, they're known as Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Yehuda. Jehuda. All right. So those are from Leah. So Rahil, when she saw her sister getting pregnant and like having like four children, like at one time, she got really jealous. Right? She's like, "Why would you get pregnant? Like, I want to be pregnant. I want to." I want to be favored by Yaqub even more because she's favored by Yaqub because she's the one he wanted, right? So he, 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 she wants to get closer to Yaqub more because now Leah could take the place of, of her because she has children. So she gave to Yaqub, her, her servant, uh, Bulha. And she told him, you can marry her and, you know, get children from her. So Jacob, he married her and from her he got Dan, and Niftali. So after that, Leah got jealous. Okay, she's like, how dare you give your servant for him so he can get children from your servant. No, I'm gonna give him my servant and he can get children from my servant. Okay, so like, you know, like typical family stuff, right? So she gave, her, she gave him her servant, Zulfa, and he married Zulfa. And from Zulfa, he got Jad and Ashir. So after that, Leah did not stop. She also got pregnant again. And then from, uh, from this pregnancy, at this time she got Issachar and Zabalon and a daughter, the only daughter of Yaqub. Her name was Dina. So at this point, Rahil was like, I give up, right? You know, I can't do anything. So she prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give her a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her what she wanted. And this is what we, we always say. If you have a problem, 
if you have a trouble in your daily life and you're struggling with something, don't go to someone like a human or any other thing and try to, to seek help from that. No, S go between you and yourself and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you have the king of the kings, who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created even that person you're, you're seeking help from, Allah who created all the kings and the rulers we know in our world, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to demanish, they're gonna be demanished. He's, he's of course gonna give you whatever you want if you ask him, right? And this is exactly what happened with her. Because at first she was counting on other people, right? But now she said, you know what? I'm gonna count on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm gonna pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may give me a child. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her what she wanted. So he gave her Yusuf alayhi salam. Joseph. Inshallah, we're gonna talk about him next time in, in depth. But he's known to be very, very, very beautiful. And he had really, really good manners among his brothers. So all of this occurred in Haran. All of this, you know, family pregnancy feud happened in Haran, right? And Jacob was still working for his uncle as a shepherd and of a total of 20 years. So after those 20 years, Jacob was like, okay, he went to his uncle and he said, can you like, let me go? Like, I'm tired of working as a shepherd. Can you let me go? Can I be free now? So he said, you know what? Ever since you came to me, I was blessed. And I had a lot of wealth. There's something blessed with you. So I'm really happy with you, my nephew. So you can take any of my wealth. Take anything from my wealth. So Jacob said, okay. He said, I want you to give me from the, this year every animal that, uh, that has a spot on it. كل حيوان أبقى. Any animal with a spot on it that, that is going to be born this year, give it to me. I want you to give me any animal that is white and black. And I want you to give me any animal that is pure white. And he also said, I want the white goats from you. So his uncle said, okay. He gave him what he wanted. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to um, Jacob alayhi salam and he told him, this is the time for you to return to Canaan. This is your time to return now. And I'm gonna support you. I'm gonna be there with you. So don't worry. So Jacob, you know, he was pleased. He's finally gonna return home. So he... He told his family, he told his wives and servants and his children, he said, we are going to go back to Canaan, to where I was born. Are you okay with that? So they said, okay, we, we agree. Right? So they can finally meet Ishaq. So on the way back, they were, uh, Ishaq alayhi uh, salam, sorry, Yaqub alayhi salam, on the way back, he stopped in Canaan, and then an angel, some angels came to him. And then the angels told him, al is approaching you with 400 men. Because Yaqub alayhi salam sent to al Ais a letter and he asked for some sympathy from him. You know, like, please have some sympathy. I'm, like, I'm asking you, let's put our feud aside, we're brothers, etc. So the angels told him, he is approaching you, he's coming to you, but he has like 400 men. So like you're, you're done, like he's gonna kill you. So Yaqub, again, he did not seek refuge from anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is what saved him. So he went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, oh Allah, please help me from the evil that might have come from ISIL, help me from the harm that might approach me from ISIL, save me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him the angels and he told, they told him, we are with you, we're going to support you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you and he's going to support you. So at this point, look at the smartness of Yaqub alayhi salam. So Yaqub alayhi salam prepared a gift. Okay? And with, with each gift, he assigned a servant of him. So the gift was like a huge amount of animals, all right? Like 200 goats, like 20 cows, 300 something sheep, etc. With each of individual, like individual animal, he gave a servant. He had a servant. And he told them, so I want you to go, and when you see Al-Ais, he's gonna ask you, 
who do you belong to and for whom are these animals? Tell, that, tell him, we belong to your slave, Jacob. So basically Jacob is saying, telling them, say that I, Jacob, I am Isil's a slave, right? So he's trying to be smart he's, because he knows like his father, uh, his brother is like really angry at him because like Jacob was like trying to take away his blessings, blessings and all of that. So Jacob is showing him that no, 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 I am your slave. I'm nothing compared to you. So this is what exactly they did. And then he told, he, he told his servants, tell him that Jacob is going to follow us. He's going to come after us, but he's going to be a little late. So this is what exactly happened. And then Jacob intentionally, he took some long time. He delayed his arrival to like two nights. Now during those two nights, what happened? At the Fajr, the Fajr time, near the sunrise of the second night, Jacob was in his like place, all right, where he was camping in, and suddenly a man approaches him. <clears throat> so this man approaches him, and and Yaqub is concerned, like, who, who's this guy? What does he want? Is he is he trying to harm us? So he approached them, and Yaqub wrestled this man. He wrestled him, and he beat him. But while they were wrestling, the man hit the hip of Yaqub, causing Yaqub to have a limp. And so the, the angel, who came in the form of a man, told Yaqub, what is your name? Yaqub said, my name is Yaqub. So the angel told him, from now on, you're no more going to be known as Yaqub. Your name is Israel, Israel. What does Israel mean? Israel means Abdullah, the servant of Allah. In the Bible, they say Israel means the one who defeated Allah. Astaghfirullah Billah. Can, can anybody defeat Allah? Billah. No. The linguistic term actually means, in Hebrew, Yishrael means Il means Allah, Ilah, Yishrael, the servant of Allah. This is what it means. So, there's also another definition of it, which means, Al-Quwwa min Allah. Power is from Allah, because he defeated the angel with the power of Allah. Not the defeater of Allah. The power from Allah. So we have two meanings for it. The servant of Allah and the power is from Allah. And so he was given this name and he was known as Israel from now then. So after that, after this whole fight happened, Yaqub asked him, who are you? What's your name? So the man left and here Yaqub knew that this was an angel. Then he turned and left his head and he found al Ais with his 400 army men approaching. So Yaqub is like, okay, I'm not prepared. Like, what is going to happen now? Like, I, I hope everything is going to turn out the right way, right? So al Ais comes over and he stands in front of Yaqub. What is going to happen? Is he going to kill him? al Ais descends from his horse, approaches Yaqub, and he hugs him. And he kisses him, and he cries, and he forgives him. So Yaqub alayhi salam is happy with this, right? And al Ais and Yaqub are, are now friendly again. So al Ais turns his head, and he sees like women and like around like eleven children, right? And a twelve a twelve child who's a daughter. So he's like, hey, where did you get that from? Who, who are these? So Jacob says, this is a gift from Allah to your slave. Again, he keeps on emphasizing that, hey, I'm, you're my older brother. I'm nothing compared to you. You're, I'm your slave. He's being respectful to his brother, right? 
So Al-Ais, you know, was happy and Yaqub bowed to Al-Ais, Sajadala. So bowing back then was the greeting of, of the Jews and like Ibrahim salam, because they took it from the angels bowing to Adam, right? This was their greetings. Do you know how, how when we greet today, we shake hands? So for them, it was bowing. It was, it was not meant to actually worship the person. It was meant as an action of respect, as saying hello. So Yaqub bowed to him and his whole family started bowing to Al-Ais. So Al-Ais told them, you know, stand up. You know, you don't have to do this. And then Al-Ais assembled the family of Yaqub with his family and together they went back to Canaan. Together. After, they, after Al-Ais wanted to kill Yaqub, together they went back to Canaan. So there Yaqub approached Mount Sa'ir and after he approached Mount Sa'ir he came to a place where he built a house and there he knew a man known as Shachim bin Jamur. Shachim bin Jamur had a very big farm and he ma married his daughter Dina, married Jacob's daughter Dina. And when he married his daughter Dina, the man was treating Dina very harshly and he was, you know, being abusive with her, etc. So the children of Yaqub, they were really annoyed with what, with what they were doing to, his, to their sister, right? So they, they said to them, you know what, listen, we can't, this can't, like, this marriage cannot be completed unless you guys are circumcised. Because circumcision is an order by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim, right? To, and, and the people and the descendants of Ibrahim were Muslims. So they were ordered to do the same thing. So he, they told them, you have to get circumcised and then you can stay as the husband of my, of my wife. You and your whole people, not just you. So they did what they, they were told to. So the first night, they were weak, they were tired, you know, it, it's, it's something like painful. The second night, they were tired. The third night, they were really, really, really tired. So the children of Yaqub, they took this chance to revenge and they killed them all. And they freed, freed Dina from their husband. Before that, Yaqub bought the farm of Shachib, Shachim from, from, from him. So Yaqub bought, Shachim had a farm, Yaqub bought this farm from him. And then the children of Yaqub took all of the wealth and money of Shachim. So they became even more wealthy. So Yaqub alayhi salam approached where he has left his rock. Remember the rock that he marked? It was near this farm. And then here he said, I will call this place the house of Il. And he built a building which became Al Masjid Al Aqsa. And the city became known as Ilya. Ilya, which is the ancient name of Al Quds. So the first person, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions have asked the Prophet Sallallahu what is the first house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that was built? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Masjid Al-Haram. And then they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And then they asked the Prophet, what was the amount of time between them? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 40 years. So before 40 years from this incident, Ibrahim and Ismail built al kaaba right? Remember we talked about it last, last week. Now Yaqub builds Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And so then he did this promise. He made up his promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he went to Ishaq alayhi salam. He wants to see his father again after years. And he meets his father and his father is so happy. Finally, he's... His son is back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise is always truthful. 
Now there in Canaan, he lived with his family in Hebron with, with his father, with Ishaq. And Ishaq became old and ill and he died. He died when he was 180 years, Ishaq. So Ishaq lived 180 years. And when he died, al ais and Yaqub buried him in the place where Ibrahim السلام, was buried, in the, in the same cave where Ibrahim has bought to bury Sarah. Ibrahim was buried there, and then they buried Ishaq there, which is today uh, is in, in the spot of Masjid al-Khalil, the mosque of al-Khalil, where Ibrahim السلام, is buried. <coughs> so after that, Yaqub lived among his children in Canaan, in Hebron, and his wife Rahil would get pregnant and she would give birth to Benjamin, Benjamin. But this time, she struggled when she was giving birth and she died, she passed away. So Jacob became really sad and he married, uh, and sorry, he buried her in the same spot where they were and then he marked her grave and he decorated it and he marked it with rocks because he really loved her. And this is known as the grave of Rahil in our modern, modern day times. So here, this is the family of Yaqub. This is the first part of the story of Yaqub. The second part would be Yaqub and Yusuf, which is the story of Yusuf. al ais who did he marry? al ais married Basma. Basma would be the daughter of Ismail alayhi salam. Ismail on his deathbed, he sent to Ishaq and he told him his will. He said that when I die, I want al ais to marry my daughter Basma. So al ais married his daughter Basma. And al ais and Basma got a child, his name was Rum. Now, remember what we, we described al ais He was white and he had reddish hair. Now his child, Rum, he was really white and he had yellow hair. So he was known as Al-Asfar, the yellow. So what happened to, to these people, to al ais They went and lived in Betra and they became known as the Edomites, Al-Edumiyun, and their capital was Al-Betra. Now after that, they moved north to the north, to where Syria is, and they spread across Europe. And they got married uh, and interbreeded with the descendants of Katim bin Yawan bin Yafith bin Nuh. And the descendants of Elisha bin uh, Yawan bin Yafith bin Nuh. From Elisha bin Yafith bin Yawan, uh, sorry, from Elisha bin Yawan bin Yafith bin Nuh comes the Greek. And from Katim bin Yawan bin Yafith bin Nuh comes the Romans. So the children and the descendants of Al-Ais from Rome, they mixed with the Romans and they gave them the blonde hair and the you know, green and yellow eyes, sorry, green and blue eyes and the yellow hair and the white face. So part of the people of the Roman Empire were actually descended from Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this is why some Arabs call them Banu al-Asfar, the children of the yellow one. But of course, because some scholars say, you know, al ais is actually the, the ancestor of all the Romans, but this is false. Because as we said, Yafith had, uh, descend had two uh, descendants who are Katim and Elisha, and from them had, you know, we had like the, the famous ancient Romans and ancient Greeks, right? Like we're talking about Iskander, uh, Alexander the Great, and uh, what was his name? Um, Aflaton, right? Plato and Aristotle. Those were ancient. Those were like before Abraham sometimes. Okay? At, at some time. Now, Yusuf uh, from Yaqub alayhi salam, he had 12 males. 12 males, right? From those 12 ma males, would descend the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel. They are the tribe of Rubin, the tribe of Simon, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Jad, the tribe of Ash Ashir, 
the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Esachar, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Zebulon, the tribe of Yusuf, and the tribe of Benjamin. And the tribe of Yusuf would be also divided into two tribes, the tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Menisah. And from Judah, the tribe of Judah, and we will talk about it, inshallah, when we approach the story of Suleiman, the term Jewish comes. So today, we were able to establish how and where and what are the roots of the tribes of, the, of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Inshallah, uh, next time we are going to talk about Yusuf alayhi salam. We can do adhan, inshallah, and then we can use the slides after the adhan. JazakAllah khair. So inshallah, this is today, as we said, this is the first chapter of the history of the Israelites. And now, we talked about the, the story of the, pat, the second patriarch, Yaqub, and we have established the roots of the tribes of Israel. Now, if we look at the um, screen here, so this is, I'm sorry, it's in Arabic, uh, but I will... I will point out and say the English name for you. Okay. This is a family tree I constructed that includes the descendants of Nuh alayhi salam from nations from Ad all the way from Adam until um, you know Prophet Muhammad, etc. Uh, it's incomplete at the moment, but there are portions that are completed, such as this one. So if you look at here, okay, this is Nahur, who is the grandfather of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Let me zoom in. So this is Nahur, the grandfather of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Nahur had Azar and Haran. Azar had Ibrahim and he had Nahur, right, and he had also Haran. Okay, so Haran had two, Haran here, he had two daughters. He had Malka and he had Sarah. Sarah would marry Ibrahim and Malka would marry Nahor over here. The brother of Ibrahim over here. And Nahor would have Betawil. And Bitawil, as we said, had two daughters who are Leah and Rahil. So Ibrahim alayhi salam married Sarah and he married Hajar. All right. I think I need to zoom in. Okay. There we go. Okay. So here. Hajar had Ismail and only Ismail, sorry, and Sarah had Ishaq. So Ishaq, as we said, married Rafqa. From Rafqa he got Yaqub over here, and he got Al Ais. Yaqub married Rahil and Leah. Let's zoom in into it. So this is Yaqub. He married Rahil and Leah. 
From Rahil, let's start with Leah. From Leah, he had his elder, eldest children, right? He had, he had Shamon, Lawi, Yehuda, Zabalon, Isakhr, and he had Dina, and he had Robil. From Rahil, he had Binyamin and Yusuf, alayhi salam. Now from his two servants, Balha and Zalfa. Balha, he got from her, Neftali and Dan. And from Zalfa, he got Ashir. On the other side, Al-Ais, who's the brother of Yaqub, he married Basma bint Ismail. And he, from her, he got Rum. So, this is the portion that I want you to focus on now. So if we go back, let's go back to Sam. Okay. Now here is Yafith, one of the children of Nuh alayhi salam. Yafith had Aumar, Tirash, Tobal, Ma'juj, Yawan, Midai, Mashah. Now I want you to keep in mind that this is a still incomplete, okay? But I'm going to focus on the portions that are completed. Umar, let's go to the family of Yafith. All right? Umar had three children. He had Ashkenaz, Rifath, and Tugharma. Ma'juj, he had a descendant of Hawnar and Majur, and some say that he had a child named Sini and Turk. Yawan had four. He had Dodanim, Elisha, Katim, and Tarshish. And Medai had Faris, Wahind, Wasint, and Mashah. We don't know his children yet. But from Mashah comes Al Illyrian, the Illyrians, who uh, lived in the Balkans in the ancient times. Their descendants, the Illyrians, the descendants of Illyrians in our day, in our day, are the Albanians. So the Albanians descend from Mashah. Madai, he is the father of the Indu, uh, Indu nations, Indu Iranian nations, like the Indians, the Pakistanis, the Pashto, right, uh, Persians. From Faris comes the Persians, right? From Hind comes the Indians. Notice this. The, the Indian subcontinent, right? India. The term comes from the word Indus Valley. The term comes from the word Indus Valley, right? Indus is the Greek form of Indu. Indu is the Aramic form of Ind. Now, Ind because some nations could not say the ha, like for instance in Greek, in Greek, if you look at the alphabet of Greek, it is pronounced as e, not h. They don't have an h. And even in Latin uh, languages today, like French and Sp Spanish, right, they don't say the h. Like for instance, if they wanna say hospital in French, they write the H O P, but they don't say hospital. They say hospital. They don't say the H. And this is where the Indus Valley became Ind. So if if we go to the root of it, it would become Hind, the name of the child of Medai. Something to know about the child of Medai. Medai married his cousins from Ailam. Ailam was the child of Sam. So they intermixed with the Semites. And this is why today, if you look at the Persians, you say like they're very similar to Arabs. Like they look really alike like the Arabs because they have a Semitic blood in them. This is why. So back into here. And also from Medai comes the Tajikistanis, right? Tajikistanis, the Kurds, the Bashto. The Bashto are the people of, of Afghanistan. And the Sindh, the Sindh are also people in uh, Pakistan, and the Punjab, and also the Baluch. 
From Yawan, we said that he has Dodanim. Dodanim, he is the ancestor of the people of Rhodes, which is an island uh, near Turkey and Greece. Uh, Greece, yeah. Elisha, he is the, the, the ancestor of the Greek people. Katim, his descendants went to Cyp Cyprus. And from there, they went to the Italic uh, Peninsula, the Italian Peninsula, right? And there, there was a tribe from him that was known as the Latinos. And from the Latinos comes the Romans, like Julius Caesar, for instance, and the Roman Empire. Tarshish, he is the ancestor of the Iberians. Now, when I say Iberians, I mean the West Iberia, because there are two Iberia. There is the Iberia in the east, which is in the Caucasus area, right? Caucas Caucasian area. And there's Iberia, which is Spain and Portugal. Now, the Spanish people, I want you to note this, the Spanish people in our current day, they're not the descendants of the Iberians, of Tarshish, because they were mixed. Mostly, they are dis they're Germanic, because the Goths, the Visigoths, who ruled over the peninsula, they were Germanic. But if you hear about a people, a nation called the Basque, the Basque nation, right? Which is between France and Spain. And there's a country called Andorra, right? Andorra. And the Catalans, we all hear about the Catalans, right? Catalonia. These people, they are the Iberians. They descend from Tarshish. But the Castilians and the Leon people, they are Germanic. They come from Germany and Denmark. This is where or their origins are from. Now, if we move here, Ma'juj. I personally struggled a lot with Ma'juj when I was researching him because he has a lot of children. <laughs> if you look at the mass between China and Russia, all of this mass were, uh, and, were and are occupied by the descendants of Ma'juj. All of this huge mass. The Hungarians are descendants of Ma'juj. The Finlandians are descendants of Ma'juj. The Estonians are descendants of Ma'juj. The Slavs, like Russians, uh, Serbians, Ukrainians, Polish, etc., they are descendants of Ma'juj. All of the Turks are descendants of Ma'juj. And the Chinese and Japanese, you know, East Asians are descendants of Ma'juj as well. Something to note is, if you heard about Attila the Han, he was a very famous uh, emperor uh, who sparked, we all know the Mongolian Empire, right? And how it was like an empire of fear and terror. So there was a, 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 an empire of fear and terror before that, which is uh, called the Huns, the Huns Empire. Their leader was called Attila the Hun, and he did like nearly the same things that Genghis Khan did. They lived in like where Central Asia is, and then they occupied all of this mass until they reached Europe where today Hungary is. And they mixed with their cousins, the Majur. The Majur is the ancestor of the modern day Hungarians. In Arabic, Hungary is known as Al Majar from Majur. But the Huns are the descendants of Honar. Right? So they're cousins and they're intermixed with each other. Also, the Siberians. So the, there is this idea that Siberians, the Siberians who lived in, you know, today Russia, the. I, I, the snow part of Russia, there was a bridge connecting Asia and America in the north, Asia and Alaska. And from this bridge, some Siberians migrated and reached Alaska. And from Alaska, they spread all around the continents, the, the Americas. Those people will become the Native Americans. So the Native Americans, they descend from Ma'juj as well and also the Siberians. The Mongolians and the Tatar also descend from Ma'juj. And also finally, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, I mean, of course, descends from Ma'juj, right? Tirash is the ancestor of the Tarwadiyin, uh, you know, the Trojans, Thracians, who lived in uh, also near the Balkans. Their descendants, are the Romanians and the Moldovians today. Finally, this is like the, the big party here, Aumar. Aumar had three children, Togarma, Rifat, and Ashkenaz. Let's begin with Togarma real quick and let's conclude with that. 
to Gharma, he had four children. He had Hayek Nahabit. Hayek Nahabit is the ancestor of the Armenians. And he was the servant of the Namrud. Do you remember the Namrud who we talked about? He was the servant of the Namrud. And he had Qawqaz, Qawqaz, who was the ancestor of the Chechnians, Shishaniin, and the Angosh. And he had Lekos. Lekos is the ancestor of the Dagestani people, Dagestan. Finally, he had Kartlos. Kartlos, from this word comes the term Kartavillian. The Kartavillian languages, from them comes the Georgians, Georgia. Rifath, and this like took a lot of efforts. Rifath, he had a child, his name was Bi'ath. Let's go in depth here. Bi'ath, all right? And Bi'ath had a child, his name was Phineas, who came from Scythia, which is a, a, a region above the Caucasus, the Caucasia in Russia. Phineas the Scythian, he had a child called Nil. Nil married an, an Egyptian princess, her name was Skota. And Nil, he had a child as well. His name was Jewel Glass or Guel Glass. Guel Glass is the ancestor of the Celts. Today the Celts are the Irish, the Scottish, and the Welsh people. They occupied the land known as France and the British Isles and Ireland. And they were actually the most common race in Europe until the Germanics came over and like murdered them all. So the British people today of England, they are Germanic, they're not Celts. They're originally from Denmark and North Germany. But the people of Scotland, Wales, and Ireland are the true people of this land. And France was known as Gallia, or the Gauls. The same thing happened. There was a, uh, a tribe, a Germanic tribe known as, uh, known as the Frankians, who conquered this land and fought wars with the Celts or the Gauls in, in France, and they kicked them out and they took over. So the French today, because their language is Romance, a Romance language, right? It descends from the Latin language. That does not mean they're Romans. They're not Romans. They're Germanic. By blood, they're Germanic. Their language is a Romance language. Now here's the big conclusion. Let's go all the way back to Umar. All right. Umar had a third child. His name is Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz, is that name familiar? Why am I doing this whole thing? What, does it, what is the relationship between it and the Israelites? It comes to here. Ashkenaz is the ancestor of the Germanics. So when we go outside and we see our brothers, the uh, white Americans, if you see a person who's really white with blue eyes and yellow hair, like very blonde hair, you know this guy is a descendant of Ashkenaz, the son of Omar, the son of Yafith, directly. He's a Germanic guy. The Germanics, they occupied northern Germany and the Denmark and Scandinavia, which is Sweden and Norway and Iceland. Okay, now these people, unlike any other nation, they were nomads and tribes there who were fighting each other. But then they decided they wanted to do a confederation of tribes and unite, and they started fighting the Romans and started like bothering the Romans. So the Romans were so angry with them to the point where they called them barbar barbarians, barbaric. So they called them barbaric tribes, like savages. So they started fighting them. But then when the Roman Empire was divided into two empires and Rome fell, they took over. So France, Spain, and when I say Spain, I, meant, I mean Leon and Castalia and all of these lands. Portugal, um, what else? England, the white population of America and Canada, the white population or the European population of the Americas as a whole, you know, like white Mexicans, uh, white Latino Americans, 
Australians, white Australians, white New Zealanders, all of these are Germanics descended of Ashkenaz. And we know the term Ashkenazi Jew. What does that tell you after I've explained all of that to you? Let's connect it to the first thing I've said about in, in this lesson, I've talked about in this lesson. Who are the Israelites? The descendants of Israel, not the descendants of Ashkenaz. So basically 95% of the Jews today, they don't belong to Israel. They don't, belong to, they don't belong to Jacob. So when they say our ancestors and keep saying our ancestors and they keep saying in their books, in their book, the Torah, that they are the chosen people and all other nations are Gentiles, Gentiles right? Like they're going servants to them. That is of course not true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not do any racism. But if, if they're talking about that, they're kind of contradicting themselves because they're not part of, they're not those chosen people. If the Torah is referring to anything, it's referring to the descendants of Jacob, not the descendants of Ashkenaz. And this is where it all connects. And this is where we should see the obvious history of the Israelites and reflect that on modern facts. Thank you so much. Let's do dua, inshallah. اللهم هدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق وإنه لا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تسلط علينا إلا من يرحمنا يا رحم الراحمين سبحانك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة جزاكم الله خيرا